Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, arrest made. This morning we have more information about the suspect than a stabbing in a popular Northwest Side movie theater. Plus, an unusually early and long lasting heat wave bringing more triple digit temperatures to a large part of the country. This morning, it is warm. It is fairly mild out there. The humidity is not too bad either. We've uh, made it to Thursday morning. Good morning, everybody. It is June 17th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Thursday. And even even though it's not too humid outside, I could feel the difference just because I had the AC inside. So, exactly. Yeah. And the AC was working overtime again yesterday. Yep. Mike is here with more on that. And what we can officially declare is a fiesta forecast. That's true. It, it sounds weird in the middle of June saying that, but uh, yeah, Viva Fiesta, everybody. It starts, yes. uh, kicks off tonight. You know, and for being in the middle of June, everybody's worried about it being too, too hot. Um, we're actually going to be, you know, held in check today. It will be hot, obviously, mid 90s. Um, lots of water and just take it easy if you're you're heading out to some of the events. But uh, yeah, not not bad. It could be a lot hotter. Beautiful view out there at the airport. There is uh, somebody coming in for a landing. Probably one of those overnight uh, cargo jets. Um, we do have mostly clear skies right now. Temperatures are up just a little bit compared to yesterday. So yeah, yesterday was more pleasant when you stepped outside. We have 77 right now here in town and dew points are up uh, just a couple of notches compared to this time yesterday. So there's a slight bit of a heat index right now. Not bad though. So, and later on this afternoon, the humidity will drop down somewhat, so we won't have just outrageously high heat index readings. Mold did go up yesterday on the moderate side and uh, throughout the rest of today. Once again, we're going to be going to 95. Yesterday only got up to 93 again and a shower or two. I think even lesser chances. There were a couple that popped up here and there yesterday, one or two today. And that'll be about it. And then Looks like the next rain chance really won't get here until probably about the um, first part, first and middle part of next week. Also, we're going to be heating up as we head in toward Father's Day. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Stephanie, Mark. Are we doing traffic? Oh, we're doing traffic. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought you were just waiting in the wings for next. You know hour. what? We got We got to be waiting in the wings all the time, Mike. And you know, we do have a mess that's happening here off 35 at New Braunfels. This is a view from Transguide, which is why we're here a little bit earlier than usual. You can see the mess that this crash is causing. Lanes right now have been moved over to two. What we know right now is that this crash occurred sometime a little bit after or before three this morning, we should say. But take a look right here on the maps. It is causing some slowdowns here in those northbound lanes of 35 right at New Braunfels Avenue. Uh, uh, again, we're going to be watching this one pretty closely, but of course, use caution. We still have our emergency crews out there. They've been out there for some time and we'll be watching this closely and seeing how that may impact your Thursday morning commute. Now, jumping over here to I-10 westbound at Westfest, we are actually seeing a little bit of a slowdown here as well. Take a look here in these westbound lanes. Traffic slowing down to 18 miles per hour, but then picking it back up a little bit around to 70 miles per hour, a little bit further up on I-10 West. So it uh, looks like this may be clearing out pretty soon, but slowdowns and that major crash are what we're watching out for right now. But taking a look around the city, just those two things right now. Let's take a look at our inbound times. If you are going to be joining us here in the downtown San Antonio area in the next few minutes, uh, look, take a look here. I-10 West coming in from Bernie. We have about a 27 minute commute time and 281 coming in from Bull uh, We have 27 minutes. And if you're coming in from 35 from New Braunfels, we have 27 minutes right now. So nothing too major to report on those inbound times. But again, this is what we'll be watching closely throughout the morning. We're monitoring it. Uh, looks like we have some flares set up and lanes have been moved over to just two lanes right now. So that is causing a backup. But again, we'll be watching that one pretty closely right here on GMSA. So stay with us for the very latest. Mark Stephanie. This morning, the Frio County Sheriff's Office releasing information about a deadly shooting that took place in downtown Pearsall yesterday. It happened at the corner of Oak Street and East San Marcos just before 11 a.m. Pearsall police say a suspect entered a business with a gun and shot two women. Police say the suspect then left and went to another business where he killed himself. The two women were taken to a hospital. Their conditions are unknown at this time. The incident caused nearby businesses to go on lockdown. No other injuries were reported. The suspect in a brutal stabbing at a Northwest Side movie theater is now in custody after turning himself in. 24-year-old Andrew Alexander Pantaleon turned himself in to the San Antonio Police Department's Central Substation yesterday afternoon. 
police had been looking for a suspect since the June 5th incident at Palladium that left a woman with multiple stab wounds. Police say she has since been released from the hospital. Investigators received numerous tips after the agency released surveillance video of two men considered persons of interest in the case, but then eliminated one of them after determining he was not involved. And in that stabbing, police say it appears the incident was a random act of violence and there was no motive. But the Leon will be charged with aggravated assault of a deadly weapon. Now to the heat wave baking the West. Extreme heat, nothing new this time of year, but this is different. Experts say summer heat waves are starting earlier and lasting longer. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has the latest. This morning, 40 million Americans are feeling the effect of a dangerous heat wave. On Wednesday, record high temperatures were shattered in California, Arizona, Utah, and Montana, where Billings hit 105 degrees, tying the city's hottest June day ever. Just south of Billings, the dramatic picture showing flames in the mountains above the city of Red Lodge. One of two large fires burning in Montana. In Lincoln, Nebraska, the triple digit temperatures causing this road to buckle. California's Death Valley is the record holder for the hottest temperature ever recorded on Earth, 134 degrees back in 1913. The forecast for Death Valley this week, flirting with that record, with temperatures in the mid-120s. This morning, power companies in California and Texas are asking customers to cut back on electricity. Start thinking about uh, things that you do that use a lot of electricity that you can move to different parts of the day. So maybe you're running your dishwasher uh, later in the evening or earlier in the day. Same with the washing machine and dryer. The heat now baking areas already parched by extreme drought. With no rain in sight, lakes and reservoirs that millions of people rely on for their water supply are drying up. ABC's Matt Gutman is at Folsom Lake in California. At about this time last year, this entire boat ramp was underwater, but the drought so severe this year that Folsom Lake has shrunk, and now you've got to go a quarter mile in that direction just to find water's edge. The low water level at Folsom Lake even making it possible to find the wreckage of a plane crash from 1986. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. President Biden back at the White House this morning. This afternoon, Russian President Vladimir Putin spent more than three hours discussing issues yesterday at their summit in Geneva, Switzerland. The president says they ticked through their respective lists of items to talk about very quickly. In one area of agreement, Biden and Putin decided to return their respective ambassadors to Washington and Moscow in a bid to improve badly deteriorated diplomatic relations between the countries. Biden and Putin also agreed to start working on a plan to solidify their country's last remaining treaty limiting nuclear weapons. Lawmakers in Washington are working on legislation that calls for various public and private entities to notify the government within a day of a cyber attack. The bipartisan bill is being led by Senators Mark Warner, Marco Rubio and Susan Collins. Right now, there is no single federal standard for breach notifications, which critics say is leaving the U.S. vulnerable to hackers. The legislation is expected to apply to U.S. government agencies and federal contractors. It also includes liability protections for those who submit reports. China has launched its first crewed space mission in five years' time, sending three science-minded military pilots to a new orbiting station they're expected to reach later today. I believe actually they have docked in the overnight hours. China has now launched 14 astronauts into space since its first crewed mission in 2003, becoming only the third country after the former Soviet Union and the United States to do so on its own. China is not a participant at the International Space Station, largely as a result of U.S. objections to the Chinese program's secrecy and close military ties. However, China has been stepping up cooperation with Russia and a host of other countries. Elon Musk's company SpaceX has received a warning from a district attorney in South Texas over beach closures and private security issues. SpaceX is using stretches of undeveloped land near Boca Chica Beach to build and test massive rocket prototypes. Authorities sent a letter threatening the company with legal action. They say SpaceX could be violating several state laws by shutting down public beaches for extended periods of time and for using unlicensed security guards to ward people off public roads. According to the the Federal Aviation Administration. SpaceX is authorized to close the beaches for up to 300 hours per year for rocket testing and launches. But according to the DA's letter, the company has shut down the beaches for nearly 400 hours so far this year. SpaceX could be facing a third-degree felony. 
439, about 76 degrees. And coming up, a look at the Dallas Cowboys rookie school and how it's getting players ready for training camp. Plus, it was a close one for San Antonio's Missions baseball. Outside with live cam, we have more on the seven day forecast coming up from Mike Osterhage. Any storms out there as we head into the weekend? He'll tell you coming up as we get ready to wrap up spring 2021. 442. Welcome back and good morning. Time for a look at sports. San Antonio Missions Baseball still hosting Northwest Arkansas this week out at Wolf Stadium. The mission struggled through most of the game last night, but tried a late inning comeback to attempt. It was not enough. They lost the Naturals 3-2. Win streak ends at five games with the Los San Antonio Falls to 21 and 17 on the season. Series continues tonight at 705 out at the Wolf. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Now that Dallas's mini camp is over, there's still work to do before training camp kicks off next month, and that would be rookie school. This is the brainchild of second year head coach Mike McCarthy, who did not have a chance to really implement it last year due to the pandemic. He says he got the idea when he was the quarterback's coach with Green Bay in 1999. Next stop is Oxnard as the Cowboys return to camp in California with their scheduled arrival set for July 20th. And time now is 4.43 and about 76 degrees right now. Next on GMSA, a murder mystery gripping a South Carolina community. We'll hear from the family of two people who were found dead outside their home. And welcome back. It's about 4.46. The family of a South Carolina mother and her son who were killed outside their home are speaking out about the murder in an exclusive interview. ABC's Andrew Dibbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Do you think they will find who did this? I would certainly hope so. I hope so. It's the murder mystery gripping Colleton County, South Carolina. Ten days ago, 52-year-old Maggie Murdoch and her 22-year-old son Paul found dead outside their home, the victim of multiple gunshot wounds. This morning, the victim's family is speaking out to ABC News. Did they have any enemies? I really don't know of any enemies. You hear all this talk on the, you know, social media with regard to Paul, but I don't know of anybody no. that would truly, that would truly be an enemy or truly want to harm them. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on our exclusive interview, plus the very latest on this urgent investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, Carlton County, South Carolina. Time check now, 447. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos about that accident on I-35 in New Braunfels. Yeah, Mark, Seth, it looks like it's still causing issues for drivers. And of course, as we know, as more people get out on the roads, uh, they could encounter problems like this, and we want them to be extra careful. Let's take a look here right at the view at Transkai 35 at New Braunfels Avenue is where this uh, view is at. You can see that we do have two lanes right now that are open as we do have emergency crews out there working to clear this scene. We even have some road flares that have been set up, you know, checking with TxDOT. This crash was reported around 245 this morning, so it has been there for a little while now. And of course, as the morning is picking up, we're starting to see more people heading out on the road. So let's take a look at the map and seeing how that's impacting traffic. A uh, little bit of an improvement from what we last showed you. Uh, I-35 northbound is where this is at, right at New Braunfels Avenue. You see a little bit of that yellow is where we're seeing that congestion starting to build. So again, we're watching this one pretty closely, guys, as the morning does pick up. Uh, another thing that we're watching here is just some construction that should be wrapping up here on I-35 southbound right at Ingle Road. Uh, this is actually right in those southbound lanes. You can see a little bit further down, we're seeing a little bit of yellow, which obviously indicates some congestion, but this should be wrapping up around five this morning. So we'll be watching that one pretty closely, but let me go ahead and bring it here to you and show you what that looks like. The view from Transguide 35 at Ingle Road, pretty dark outside. You even see some uh, construction lights. Our friends from Tech that are out there working, but uh, that should be clearing up pretty soon. But this is the one that we're going to be watching guys here at I-35 at New Braunfels. Just looks like a mess right now. So we want everyone to be a little bit safe as they head out on the roads. Yeah, especially considering, as you said, it's been out there a couple hours. Now. Yeah. Yes. 
All right. Thank you, Stephen. And a beautiful sunrise behind you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, pretty much, I think, what uh, today's is going to look like as well. You know, yesterday we had a couple of clouds hanging around in the morning and then cleared out and then a few clouds in the afternoon. And that'll be the same scenario again today. Not bad out there. Uh, no visibility problems, anything about uh, the airport. And here's a quick look at the computer model. This is that rapid update uh, kind of short range model, if you will. It does have one, two, three, four, five, maybe now granted there could be more or less of that, but just to take away from this, there's going to be one or two showers trying to pop up around the area today. Few and far between most everybody won't see anything as we go into the rest of the evening. Here's the satellite radar picture going back. 12 hours and there were a couple of showers that did pop up late yesterday, especially down there along the coastal plain. And like I said, there's going to be one or two of them out there. OK, there's been a lot of talk about the Gulf of Mexico and there's really no center of circulation to this thing as of yet. It is starting to there's a bit more of a counterclockwise flow and even looking at the water vapor imagery. Yeah, it looks like they're trying something's trying to form up right there. Hurricane center is still banking on this becoming a tropical depression in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours but still long range computer models have it tracking and until it really gets a center of circulation and something for everything to focus on this is I hate to say sort of a guess, but models, you know, don't really have a good, good grip on it. But as of right now, and this has been the some of the latest runs that everything is staying well off to the east of us. I mean, maybe by Saturday, Sunday, as this continues to work its way to the north, there's going to be a couple of wraparound showers even around uh, Houston and perhaps into some of our extreme eastern counties and this would be on into uh, Sunday morning. But other than that, this is pretty much going to be just a huge rain event well to the east of us around uh, the panhandle of uh, Florida into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, up there in the, the southeast United States. So for us, this really won't have any direct impact on us. Indirect impact. You're on the left side of one of these big storms. The right hand side in relation to the direction of travel is usually where all the rain is. On the left hand side, that's where you get the sinking air. And that means things heat up around here and it's going to be heating up this weekend. Today, 90 noon, mostly sunny skies. Still going for 95 for high temperature today. Heat index is going to be upper 90s. It won't be ridiculously hot and humid. And uh, right around 90 this evening when everything starts getting kicked off downtown for Fiesta. Again, got it used to saying that in the middle of June. Uh, 95 again tomorrow. The weekend is going to be on the hot side. Should be pretty toasty on Father's Day and as well as Monday. Then uh, a couple of showers are going to be possible to, by the middle of next week. You know, we mentioned it for Mother's Day. And Spares yes. mentioning again as we head into Father's Day weekend. If you don't have res restaurant reservations, yeah. I want to check ahead yes. and pack your patience because a lot of restaurants are still desperately understaffed right yes. now. Yes. Everywhere you go, you see a lot of hiring signs and uh, people needing more workers to come in. Yeah, I talked to somebody yesterday and they said the signs are still up and no one is applying yet. Okay. No one. So yes. we'll see if things change. But anyway, yeah. plan ahead. Yeah. yeah, even in general, a lot of the companies are holding job fairs and bonuses and this and mm -hmm. signing. That's true. Yeah. Trying to get people on board. Yep. Thank you, Mike, very much. Uh, 452, about 76 degrees. And coming up next, the new comedy starring Kevin Hart arriving on Netflix just in time for Father's Day. We're going to get a special preview next. The Wild Miniature Golf Show Holy Moly returns, plus there's a new comedy on Netflix just in time for Father's Day. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Just in time for Father's Day weekend, Kevin Hart stars in the new film Fatherhood about a single dad trying to figure out how to raise a newborn. And he says too often when you see a black father on the screen, they're in jail, on drugs or non-existent. So this is an opportunity to kind of change that, break that ground and show that there are, you know, uh, a different different versions of, of black fathers and more good than bad. And, and that should be the conversation that, that now leads the charge. Fatherhood is out Friday because on I'm Netflix. Father. It's a brand new season as we return to the birthplace of extreme mini golf. More fun and games tonight. The wild miniature golf show Holy Moly returns and sideline reporter Jeannie Mai tells me one of the reasons the show is so rare is because there are not many shows that I can watch where I can watch with the whole family. Like even some of my relatives who don't speak English, just watching a human being flying somersaulting through the air into a pit of corn. You get what's going on. The game where little white lies can lead to a big cash prize. And the hustler 
returns for season two. Host Craig Ferguson revealing that the contestants are a little better this time around because they've actually seen the show. And that makes it a much more uh, interesting. Nobody's, you know, they, they've got strategies. They have, uh, they have styles. They have ideas. They have things that, ways that they're trying to play it. Both shows return tonight on ABC. And happy birthday today to Kendrick Lamar. The Grammy-winning rapper is 34, while actor and comedian Will Forte is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Three minutes till five. Still ahead on GMSA, President Biden is back in Washington this morning following his high-profile summit with Russian President Vladimir Putin. We're going to tell you how their talks went and if there was any positive progress. Google has a new retail store opening today. We'll get our first look inside coming up in your morning Tech Bites. And taking a quick look out with TransGuy, there's an accident there on I-35 at New Braunfels keeping crews busy. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The summit between President Biden and Vladimir Putin. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the stern warning Biden delivered to the Russian leader. And taking a look outside with live cam here, we're at about 75 degrees and expecting some warm temperatures this weekend. And a good morning to you. Hope you rested well last night. It is Thursday. It is June 17th. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, most kids are out of school, but I'm celebrating even more because my child will be out of school after today, finally. Uh, Steph's convinced she was the part of the last school district in the entire country to, <laughs> to be out of school as we head into the summer break. Maybe. But then, but then you said they had a very long winter break. Yes, it was it was Christmas? worth it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it's not bad this morning. Once again, it may be maybe not quite what it was yesterday, but we're down to 74 and we will probably cool off even another degree or two with that dew point of 69, which is fairly tolerable. And yeah, for the start of Fiesta today. That's weird to say in, in June, but uh, 95 degrees and the humidity will be OK. Uh, obviously, lots of shade, lots of water, lots of uh, sunscreen. If you are heading out this evening and over the next couple of days, the aquifer did drop down eight tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and mold is on the moderate side. It did go up a little bit. Grass is low as far as uh, any cloud cover, anything out there, any heat index. There's not much so. Uh, with the humidity low enough and temperatures like this, we don't really have a heat index to deal with as of right now. 74 and in town is what it actually feels like, the actual air temperature and 60s in the, uh, the hill country. So we'll have uh, mostly clear, maybe a couple of little clouds out there this morning. Pleasant seasonably warm this morning and then mostly sunny skies still can't completely rule out a shower. There were actually one or two of them yesterday. There may be one or two today. I think even lesser chances than what we had a couple of days ago. Tomorrow is going into the weekend. We'll start to heat up still mid 90s and then going to be edging into the upper 90s as we go into especially Sunday and Monday and Back next week, maybe well after that hot start, a shower or two by the middle part of the week. We could use a, a little bit of rain now. Things have been drying out somewhat. Details in the weekend forecast are coming up in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority and Stephen Cavasso's big problems out there. What's the latest? That's right, Mike. This seems to be the big issue right now. Here at 35 at New Braunfels. The view from Transguide shows that we got quite a mess happening out there. You can take a look there. Uh, we do have a crash that was reported around 2:45 this morning, and it's had our emergency crews out there for quite some time. Uh, taking a look here at Transguide, we see that the wreckers got there. Uh, looks like they're moving that vehicle out of the way. But of course, although we're seeing traffic moving, it's moving rather slowly. Take a look right here at the map. We're seeing traffic right now slow down to 37 miles per hour uh, approaching that crash. So we do want to advise anybody that this may still be maybe clearing out in the next few moments. But of course, use that extra caution and be kind to our first responders as they are out there working to clear that scene. Now we have spotted another crash. This one happening here at Redland at Jones Maltzberger Road, not causing any issues right now because it's not uh, far off from 1604 East, but thankfully not causing any issues right now. This may resolve pretty quickly here. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times right now. Of course, if you are coming in from Seguin on I-10, we have about a 30 minute commute time to the downtown San Antonio area. And if you're coming in from Lavernia, that just went a little bit yellow there on 87. We're looking at 24 minutes this morning. And over here, if you're coming in from Floresville, right now we have a 29 minute commute time from 37. So things are moving pretty quickly, but also things are slowing down here at 35 at New Braunfels. We'll be watching that one.
following pretty closely, but it looks like it may be clearing up now that the wreckers are getting out of the scene. So we watching to see if these lanes open up here in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Late breaking news now. Fire crews working to put out a blaze on the northwest side right now. This is happening in the area of I-10 and Loop 410 near the medical center. Katrina Weber is live there now with the latest. Well, good morning. And the firefighting part of this job is over. Right now, it looks like investigations are going on. This is an abandoned building. It looks like an old world car building, according to the sign on the side. Uh, you can see the, some of the firefighters still here. We have arson and fire investigations teams inside what is left of this building. Now, uh, this, according to what we were told by police, they discovered this fire just before 4 o'clock. They were driving by and noticed the fire, called it in. Fire department arrived and put out whatever flames there were. Uh, according to police, this area is notorious for homeless people uh, going inside this building. We don't know yet if that was related to the fire this morning, but there have been problems in the past with that situation. We also can't tell what damage was done this morning because uh, from what we understand, there has been at least another fire here before. But again, the investigation continuing to try to figure out how this fire started this morning. No one injured as far as we know. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Well, this morning, President Biden back at the White House after wrapping up that eight day trip overseas, ending with a historic sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. President Biden says there were some disagreements, but that the tone of the summit was positive. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the historic handshake. President Biden and Vladimir Putin sitting down for two hours and 38 minutes inside this 18th century villa in Geneva. Their meeting caps an eight-day international trip, a trip Biden says lets the world know America is back. After their sit-down, both leaders calling the meeting productive. He's very constructive. He's very balanced, just the way that I expected. I did what I came to do. And I must tell you, the tone of the entire meetings, I guess it was a total of four hours, was was what was was good, positive. After their meeting, ABC's Rachel Scott questioning Putin about political opponents. You didn't answer my question, sir. If all of your political opponents are dead in prison, poison, doesn't that send a message that you do not want a fair political fight? The Russian leader deflecting, instead bringing up the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Over 400 people had criminal charges uh, placed on them. We have no desire to allow the same thing to happen in our country. Cybersecurity was a big topic. Putin taking no responsibility, but Biden saying he let him know what won't be accepted. Biden gave Putin a list of 16 areas of infrastructure that were off limits to attack. If it Ignored, the president issuing a stern warning. I pointed out to him we have significant cyber capability. And he knows it. He doesn't know exactly what it is, but it's significant. And if in fact they violate these basic norms, we will respond. Biden and Putin also agreed to return their respective ambassadors back to Washington and Moscow, a move being described as a positive sign. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. A year after a man was shot and killed in his car, a new arrest has been made. 25-year-old Christopher Alderete was shot in the 1100 block of West Ridge Court back on June 15, 2020. Now, San Antonio police initially arrested Fabian Hernandez for murder last year. Now, this woman, Venus Flores, is also in the Bear County Jail. An indictment states she shot and killed Alderete. So we were full of mixed emotions, honestly. It was a sad day for us, of course. It's been one year since he was killed, and when we found out the news, we were excited, you know, happy. And that mother of the victim, Norma Andrews, says she will wear the color orange for the entire month of June in honor of her son and as awareness against gun violence. Flores is in the Bear County Jail for murder. Her bond was set at $150,000. 508 about 75 degrees still ahead we're getting our first look inside google's first retail store and next san antonio public library has tons of activities for kids teens and yes adults we'll tell you how it all works next that's great just in time for summer and it's starting to feel a lot like summer out there 75 degrees for now we're going to check in with mike to see what we can expect over the father's day weekend 
And welcome back. It's about 512 now. Are you looking for something to do this summer in the San Antonio Public Library or SAPL? Got you covered. Summer with SAPL underway and there are tons of activities for kids, teens and adults. Here's how it works for teens. First, head to any library branch to pick up free t-shirt and two different summer kits while supplies last. So the first is a planting kit and the second is a journaling kit. The library is also offering a ton of fun online activities for kids. We also have a bunch of virtual offerings as well. We have things going on in Discord. We have things happening on Instagram. All of that is under our handle 210 Teen Library. So you can find us on Instagram or you can uh, find us on Discord and interact with us with different clubs throughout the week. Monday through Saturday, we have things going on happening online virtually for teens in San Antonio. Side note, you can also check out Sapple's Spotify profile. Just search for 210 Teen Library. And time now is 513, about 75 degrees out there. Facebook showing off how it can tell where digitally altered images known as deep fakes come from. Plus, Spotify is out with a new app that's meant to go against its rival, Clubhouse. From prom dresses to workouts and new adventures, you hope the more you give, the less they'll miss. But even if your teen was vaccinated against meningitis in the past, they may be missing vaccination for meningitis B. Although uncommon, up to one in five survivors of meningitis will have long-term consequences. Now, as you're thinking about all the vaccines your teen might need, make sure you ask your doctor if your teen is missing meningitis B vaccination. At Pure Leaf, saying no is the most important ingredient in making herbal iced tea. By selecting the finest botanicals, we say no caffeine, no stress, no better way to relax after a long day of anything. Pure Leaf, no is beautiful. My cholesterol is borderline. I figure I can worry about it or do something about it. Garlic helps maintain healthy cholesterol safely and naturally. It's odor and taste free with guaranteed potency. I'm taking charge of my cholesterol with garlic. 516, welcome back. This is kind of interesting. Researchers at Facebook say they can now detect where digitally altered images known as deep fakes come from. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Facebook's new weapon against so-called deep fakes. Facebook says its new software can reveal where digitally altered videos come from. The company says the software can be trained to find deep fakes from a still image or a single video frame. Spotify has launched its own live audio app similar to Clubhouse. It's called Spotify Green Room, and it allows you to host live conversations on a wide range of topics, including music, sports, and culture. Users can also save their shows and turn them into podcasts. And Google opens its first retail store today. The Manhattan location will feature Pixel phones, Fitbits, and other Google gadgets. There are also areas called sandboxes where consumers can get their hands on experience with some devices. You can also pick up a hat or a t-shirt. You'll just have to Google exactly where it is. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. We've got good news on the traffic front. That's right. Earlier this morning, we had an accident at I-35 in New Braunfels, but things are looking better out there right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, Mark Seventy, shout out to our first responders there. They got that scene clear, but it did take them quite a while. This all happened around 245, according to TxDOT. But take a look here at the view from New Braunfels at I-35 now. Nice and smooth, which is a really good sign if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. So pretty good news there. Uh, but showing you where that crash was actually at, our system still has it reported reported there, but it has cleared there. But we do want to show you that was right. I 35 northbound at New Braunfels Avenue. Again, you can see it in our maps with the traffic flow 60 miles per hour right now. So moving pretty normal and smoothly, which is what we'd like to see. Uh, let's go ahead and jump to something that we don't like to see, which is a slowdown happening here off I 35 at Ingle Road. This is just outside New Braunfels in the southbound lanes. That is uh, you can see traffic slowing down there to about 21 miles per hour. So do expect a slowdown. We know that there has been construction that was going on out there and it should be clearing up here in the next few minutes, but I'm going to flip the camera over here to the view at Transguide and show you, you know, we'd seen the traffic backing up there just a few moments ago. Now it's picking up, but still pretty slow right now. So if you're heading down into this San Antonio area, downtown San Antonio area from I-35 South, be sure to pack your patience and hopefully your coffee in tow. Thank you, Steven.
Today is the first day of Fiesta 2021, and the official kickoff of Fiesta Fiesta will take place in person from 4 to 10 p.m. at Hemisphere, located at 434 South Alamo Street. And you can watch the celebration on KSET 12 on KSET.com or on our free streaming platforms. KSET will be covering Fiesta Fiesta from 8 to 10 p.m., and of course, our mic will be there. Fiona and I are going to be yeah. uh, the MCs on stage, and then Steve and Ursula are going to be doing the broadcast. And in years past, there's just it. The stage is set up right there at the entrance to uh, Hemisphere Park and faces south. And in years past, there's just been a crowd all the way down to Cesar Chavez. So, yeah. It, yeah. What kind of weather did you arrange for yourself? <laughs> Actually, it's going to be pretty. It's, it's going to be warm. But I mean, even back in April, a couple right. of years back, it has True. been fairly warm in the afternoon. But if you're going down there, lots and lots of water, uh, plenty of sunscreen, because by the time this kicks off, it's going to be uh, right around, say, 7, 8 o'clock, upper 80s, 90-ish. And humidity is not going to be too bad. But of course, there's going to be a lot of folks down there. So, yeah, make sure you dress appropriately and lots of water. All right, beautiful view out there from Wilson County yesterday. A couple of uh, clouds were hanging around. Uh, we may see one or two uh, clouds like we did yesterday, this morning, and then plenty of uh, clear skies. And then a few clouds will pop up later on this afternoon. Yesterday, the only triple digit being reported. And again, these are just the reporting stations in your backyard, especially down there to the southwest. You may have hit 100, but over there in uh, Del Rio, 93 in town. That is the average, the normal high temperature this time of year. 97 was the high yesterday in Pleasanton and today about the same situation. Del Rio computer models going for the only triple digit reading out there and we're going for 95 here in town again. Nothing outrageously hot. Plus, with the heat index, with the humidity out there, I mean, heat indices are not going to be off the charts, only a couple of notches above what the actual air temperature will be and pushing at the upper 90s and close to triple digits, obviously, down to the south. But this time of year, that ain't bad at all, and especially with all the uh, Fiesta events today and then even going now the weekend's going to be a different story because temperatures are going to be going up and that's due indirectly to that disturbance is trying to brew down there in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, as far as today is concerned, this uh, computer model again has one or two showers out there. Possible. I wouldn't really uh, count on it, though. Could be just, you know, here and there popping up. And then that may be the situation tomorrow. Doubtful, but just a mention of it. So here's what's going on. This high, this is the thing that's been in control for the past couple of days, and it's in sort of an unusual position this time of year because it's off to the west of us. Usually the highs off to these, but this is what has been taking again the little disturbances and throwing them in here and that's going to be staying in place and also mm, to a certain extent kind of acting like a little bit of a uh, a block as far as that low is concerned. This model has the low which hasn't formed in anything yet, but that's the one down there in the Gulf to stay well off to the east of us. So it's going to be a huge rain producer well off to the east. A wraparound shower maybe, but what that low is going to be doing will be on the sinking side of it. That means uh, things are going to be heating up as we go into the weekend. So we're looking at upper 90s, especially Sunday and Monday, and maybe another disturbance trying to slide on in here by, say, Tuesday in between these two areas of high pressure that are building. But what will happen by the middle part of next week, it looks like we're almost going to start to see more of a usual summertime configuration as that high sets up camp just to the east of us, and that keeps us no chances of rain around here. So hopefully we get something by the middle of next week. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies, high temperature up to 95, uh, a storm or two, maybe, you know, not not very likely at all. Just one or two of them out there today, tomorrow 95, and then we start heating up going into the weekend. We're looking at some upper 90s and weather service indicated that with the return of the humidity by Monday, heat advisories, they're already starting to look at perhaps issuing something for Monday. So something to keep in mind there and need some rain. Tuesday and Wednesday, a shower or two would be nice. That would be nice. Would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if we can make some arrangements. Yeah, maybe a late Father's Day gift for you. Ah, I like that. <laughs> so I won't have to water. Thank you very much. Right now it's just about 523 and uh, 75 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, we're going to tell you how you can see both Quiet Place movies on one ticket, plus a new look at the summer of Seoul. The biggest movie, the domestic box office, is getting supersized, at least for one night. CNN's David Daniel explains in the Hollywood Minute. Terrifying, a massive invasion. Total devastation.
distinction. It's a quiet place double feature. Wednesday, June 23rd, select theaters will show the original A Quiet Place, immediately followed by the current box office champ, A Quiet Place Part 2. Fans will get both films, plus an introduction by writer, director, and star John Krasinski for the price of one standard movie ticket. Info at aquietplacemovie.com. I guess they just like my voice and what I did. A lot of filmmakers like Cynthia Erivo's voice. She's currently playing Aretha Franklin in National Geographic's Genius Aretha, and now she's set to star in a remake of The Rose, about a self-destructive rock star dealing with professional and personal pressures. Bette Midler starred in the 1979 original, which received four Oscar nominations, including Best Actress. 1969 was a change of era in the black community. The styles were changing. Music was changing. And revolution was coming together. Here's your latest look at Summer of Soul or When the Revolution Could Not Be Televised. The music doc from Amir Questlove Thompson reveals never-before-seen footage of the Harlem Cultural Festival, a six-week event featuring a host of stars and celebrating black history, culture, and fashion. Summer of Soul debuts July 2nd in theaters and on Hulu. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 528 and it's about 75 degrees out there. Still ahead on the morning show, why some medical experts are worrying about the Delta variant of COVID-19 and that it could be a big problem for the southern U.S. this summer. And as you get ready for fun in the sun during Fiesta, what you need to know about the sunscreen you put on. their family story of survival. Making headlines this morning, why some medical experts are worried about the southern U.S. when it comes to the spread of the Delta variant of the coronavirus. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 75 degrees right now. It's going to warm up and it's gonna be a warm Father's Day. At least that's what we're hearing from Mike so far. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, the 17th of June. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hey, we have a special announcement. Mark is celebrating 27 years in TV, correct? That's right. Wow. As of today. Yes. Congrats. Thank you very much. Not all of that here at KSAP, but a right. big chunk of it. Yeah, well, we're glad you're here for the most for the most of those 27 years. Thank so, you. Yeah, it's been it's been you. it's been great. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun anniversary. Uh, I made my debut the night of the OJ Simpson Bronco Chase. Well, that's memorable. Mm -hmm. It is quite memorable. Wow. Yeah. Well, congrats again. Thank you very yeah. much. That was 94, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. Oh, you June, guessed if it. I do right. my math. 27 minus yeah. June, 17, <laughs> June 17th, 94. That's right. Or, I, or if you remember the date itself. Yeah. So I was I had, so learning I how to do weather, and I filled in for the main weather guy, KTRE in Lufkin, Texas, that night at 10 o'clock. Huh. So, and I, and too and I talked way too long. <laughs> As is the case now. Uh, so, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. so, half, so half your life you've been in TV. Uh, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's mm -hmm. super cool. Well, congratulations. Thanks. For surviving this long. So, hey, uh, not a bad start this morning. We are going to start to see the glow of the sunrise in just a couple of minutes. 74 degrees right now. We went up uh, just one notch in the past hour. That's about what you'd expect this time of year. Dew points at 69, which, okay, it's there, but it's not ridiculously humid. And that's, I mean, we're really kind of getting a prize today as far as the start of Fiesta. Later on this evening, a lot of those festivities with uh, temperatures, yeah, mid June, what you'd expect, but not anything outrageous and the humidity is going to be kept in check and we'll have lots of sunshine out there as well um, because we've got very, very dry air aloft in the atmosphere, a little bit of moisture here and there. We may see a couple of clouds popping up later on today. And yes, there is the chance for one or two of those showers around the area. There were actually one or two of them yesterday and a couple today, just a mention of it. But uh, otherwise, yeah, a lot of folks are going to be seeing a whole bunch of sunshine out there today. Mold is moderate. Grass is on the low side this morning. And as far as the rest of today, 90 at noon. This, we're getting into this same old summertime weather pattern here. 90 at noon and uh, 95 for a high. Heat index is only going to be maybe a couple of notches above that. Again, not really high, that high humidity. A shower or two is possible today. Not very likely, but as Steph alluded to earlier, yeah, just a couple of moments ago, it is gonna be heating up as we go in toward the weekend and Father's Day. Details in that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and the big problem is 
gone. Yeah, you know, pretty good uh, stuff right now here around San Antonio. Nothing too major to report. Looking pretty green, which is, of course, what we'd like to see. But we want to bring your attention to a crash that popped up in our system right here at I-10 westbound at Field Road. Uh, you know, if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area, uh, this did pop up in our system just right now. Again, in these westbound lanes, uh, we're not seeing it impact traffic right now. And I was checking the trans guide cameras. The view right now pretty dark out there, and it does appear that traffic is running pretty smoothly. Uh, checking a text out. This crash was actually reported a little bit after two this morning, but uh, again, our system just picked it up right now, and it doesn't seem like it's causing any issues. But let's go ahead and take a look at those inbound times. If you are going to be coming into the downtown San Antonio area, perhaps from Seguin, it's again, no issues right now. 29 minutes on I-10, and if you're going to be coming in from any of these locations, perhaps 37 from Pleasanton, we're looking at 28 minutes right now from Lytle on 35. It's about a 17 minute commute time, and if you are on your way from 90 coming into San Antonio. We got 19 minutes for you right now, but right now things are looking pretty good. We had a lot of issues earlier out on the road with that crash at 35 at New Braunfels, but things are picking up running pretty smoothly. People getting out on their roads. Great time to leave your house and get a cup of coffee before heading to work this morning. We'll be watching the roads closely for you as the morning does pick up. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Firefighters believe homeless people may have had a hand in the fire this morning in an abandoned building. It caused damage to a former car dealership in the Crossroads area near Interstate 10 and Loop 410. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand firefighters say this has been an ongoing problem. That's right. They say they have put out numerous fires inside this building. They say on a daily basis, probably 20 to 30 people, homeless people are staying inside this building, which, uh, as you can see, has a number of uh, da dangers that not only to the people who are staying in here, but also to firefighters. They say there are items piled up knee high inside this building and also things hanging from the ceiling that can get tangled in their equipment. So that is why firefighters take sort of a, a stand back approach when they are called out here. Let me show you what they found this morning when they got here a little bit before four o'clock. Uh, firefighters tell us a passerby is the one who noticed smoke. And then when they got here, they noticed flames and smoke coming out of the front side of this building. According to the sign on the wall, this is the old World Car, world car Building uh, here near Loop 410 and I-10. Uh, this, though, has been abandoned for some time. And again, firefighters say that they have found homeless people living in here. When they got here this morning, though, there was no one inside. They were able to knock down the fire and then take a, a sort of a cursory look around the building. But again, they do believe that those people who've been staying in this building may have been responsible for the fire here this morning. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. This morning, some health experts worry more and more new cases will soon be the Delta version of the coronavirus. And as CNN's Britt Conway reports, there's one part of the country they're particularly worried about. This is like COVID on steroids. Delta, the COVID-19 variant that devastated India. It's the dominant variant in the UK. And now there's the fear Delta could become dominant right here at home. There's one part of the country these health experts are especially worried about. Especially in the south. In the southeast. Ready? One, two, three. If you have been vaccinated, you've got very little to worry about. But they're looking at areas where there's been a lag in vaccinations. That's in light green. And where unvaccinated people gather, new cases could follow. We'll see these in amusement parks and, and we'll see them in churches and we'll see them at weddings. And if last year is any indication... If you remember, this time last year, we saw this massive surge across the South um, uh, starting around after July 4th holiday. This 4th of July, the president set a goal of having 70 percent of all Americans at least partially vaccinated. Maybe it'll be 68, maybe it'll be a little bit more. But the real danger is that 68 or 70 percent will look much higher in some parts of the country and much lower in other parts of the country. We're facing the prospect of two COVID nations where things will look great in the Northeast in California, but down here in the South, uh, we're, it's gonna be a very rocky, uh, bumpy road. Unless more people get vaccinated. Britt Conway, KSAT 12 News. Today, the Democratic-led House with the backing of President Joe Biden is expected to approve legislation to repeal the 2002 authorization for use of military force in Iraq. The growing momentum behind the repeal measure 
Follows years of debate over whether Congress has ceded too much of its war-making authority to the White House. The White House says no ongoing military activities are reliant upon the 2002 authorization. As flight schedules begin to return to normal, the FAA is mandating additional inspections of Boeing 737 MAX. The public order is actually designed to follow the aircraft manufacturer's own recommendations. The inspections are to make sure the automated flight control system are operating correctly after a major fix. Most U.S. airlines are already doing the inspections as part of their regular maintenance now. The FAA is hoping airlines in other countries will follow suit. Just about 540 on your Thursday morning. Still ahead, some sunscreen secrets you need to know about before venturing out into the sun to get your Fiesta Margarita. <laughs> Best written tease of the day. <laughs> it's factual, it's reality based. Yes, you need that sunscreen. And that Fiesta Margarita. Yeah, well, okay. But, but not yet, it's a little early. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere. As a matter of fact, it's 540 as we said. We'll be right back. <laughs> As you get out to celebrate Fiesta, don't forget the sunscreen too. It's going to be hot and the sun will be brutal on your skin. But did you know if margaritas are on the menu that lime juice can be an issue too? Ursula Perry has what you should know. From beach days to just running errands, we all do things we're not supposed to do out in the sun. For example, dermatologists say you should be wearing sunscreen every day you'll be outside, regardless of how long. I don't use sunscreen. When I come here on purpose and set my chair up, I always have it with me. And I put it on every morning. And bigger isn't always better. The FDA has called any SPF that is 50 or higher inherently misleading, citing that SPF 100 only blocks 1% more UVB rays than SPF 50. Unfortunately, sunscreen is not cancer prevention in a bottle. This doesn't substitute an evaluation by a dear dermatologist. The National Cancer Institute reports people who solely rely on sunscreen are actually more likely to get sunburns and damaged by invisible UVA rays than those who also cover up. We do wear hats and um, we do sit under umbrellas. We're out in the sun every day and it's... it's you don't want to get skin cancer. Yeah. UVA rays that penetrate much deeper into the skin, causing free radicals, can damage skin and even speed up aging. Dermatologists advise looking for a product that has zinc oxide or higher UVA protection. As for that Fiesta Margarita connection, well, apparently lime juice and the sun on your skin can create a painful reaction called margarita dermatitis. Another word fact, when you get a sunburn, that actually is mutating your DNA. And finally, check your sunscreen for anti-aging compounds. Apparently one called retinol palmitate is actually linked to certain skin cancers, the exact opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. That margarita dermatitis. Never I've heard seen, of that. I've seen a picture of it. A woman posted a picture of her son. She'd given him a lime to chew on, and it looked like a chemical <gasps> oh, burn that kind around of his thing. mouth yes. and on his hands. Ouch. So you just have to be extra, extra careful. Yeah, especially those with sensitive mm -hmm. skin. At first, it sounded, you know, made up like senioritis or something, but right. it's actually a real condition. Yeah, well, that yeah. citric acid. I mean, oh, it's like, yeah, that don't mess around with that sometimes. Just yeah. depends on the person and their skin conditions. Five forty-five, about seventy-five degrees. Coming up next, Mike checking in with the San Antonio Humane Society, and Mike says that there's a pet that needs a loving new home. Well, look who we have back in the studio, our little furry friends and our dear friend Kim Hines from the San Antonio Humane Society. How are you? I'm doing well. Who Thank is you. this little one, sweet little face? This sweet little face is Captain. Um, he is a terrier mix. He is a little over a year. Um, as you can tell right now, he's so soft and cuddly. He may be a little bit nervous in the studio, but I have a feeling he's going to want to, you know, get a ball in the backyard, yes. kids. Yeah. Go outside and play. Yep. He was out running around earlier. Plenty of fresh water outside if the little pups outside. Yes, so. yes. fresh water in general. I mean, it's hot. So mm -hmm. make sure you keep your pups hydrated. And they love sometimes to go in the little pools that you might have, the little baby pools to cool off. Um, but yeah, he's just, I mean, look at his face, Mike. Aww. He's just so sweet. And look, 
I mean, soft and, like I said, cuddly. Oh, he's going to go sleep here if I keep this up. He is. What you all got going on over there? <laughs> we have all kinds of things going on. I mean, you can come out. We're open every day from noon to 7, uh -huh. and adoption's happening. So we've got lots of cats, puppies, dogs, everything. So come on out. Okay. See us. And even check, check us them out. out online first. Check if you us want out to. online. Yep. You can go online on our website and see what we've got in store. And you can even come on in and walk around the shelter and see what we have. And volunteer opportunities it. as well. Volunteer opportunities, all of those. We've got different things like that. We've got um, Fiesta medals. You come into the store, you can adopt a pup, and then you can get a really cool Fiesta medal because it's Fiesta. Of course it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. So head on out there to the uh, San Antonio Humane Society and you can adopt Little Captain. Mm -hmm. And it's 4804 Fredericksburg Road, of course, just outside Loop 410. Number to call is 226-7461. Thank Aww, you, Kim. Thank and you. And thank you, Captain. Yes. It's great to have our pet segments back. We're yeah. running a little behind, about 10 till right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Do you want to ad adopt Captain this morning? You know, I can't wait for Mike to start bringing in cats into the studio. I love Captain, but I can't wait to see a cat in the studio. Huh? It'll happen. Can, okay. <laughs> well, we do have a we do have a situation happening here at 35 at AT&T Parkway. Let's show you what's going on there. It looks like we have a, a semi and a truck that have some issues right now on the road. Uh, it's not being reported at TxDOT right now, so we're not sure exactly which side of 35 this is happening on. But to take a look here at the map, it is right around AT&T Center Parkway, and it is a pretty dark area. So just be cautious of these two vehicles that are out there having some trouble right now. We're hoping that situation clears in the next few moments. Now, one one thing that we have been monitoring here throughout uh, the GMSA is a crash that happened here off westbound I-10 at File Road. And we just talked to our friends at TransGuy. They did tell us that there was an 18-wheeler that had overturned uh, earlier this morning around 1 that was carrying limes. And this was actually on the frontage road lanes, which is why we're not seeing it cause any issues right now here in those westbound lanes of I-10 at File. But uh, we are watching that one to see how it may impact as the morning does pick up. So we're going to get you a better view of that, of course, here, right here on GMSA. So stay with us. Uh, but taking a look here, we did have a few stalls that seem to have been clearing. This is, looks like an old graphic, but other than that, it is pretty smooth around the Alamo City. And while we're at it, let's just take a look at 1604. Things are looking pretty good right now, guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. KSAT's first ever Fiesta Porch Parade airs tomorrow from 8 to 10 p.m. on KSAT. The first hour will feature tons of information about Fiesta's history, including traditions that date back hundreds of years. So Ava Max will perform her hit song, Kings and Queens, as KSAT spotlights all the Kings and Queens for Fiesta 2021. And in the second hour, the Black Eyed Peas will perform Mamacita and AJR will perform their hit, Bang. Okay, some people really, I'm, I'm impressed by that. We're also going to meet the Porch Parade winners. And again, this airs tomorrow night from 8 to 10. The uh, Juneteenth special from ABC is going to air uh, Saturday at 2 a.m. Wow, some people really win. Yeah. Oh, ah, that's Very impressive. Nice. Wow. Hey, by the way, Stephen, we did have cats one every once oh. in a while. They don't really like being in the studios too much. And one oh. year, somebody remember when they brought uh, a bunch of little kittens and they went under one of the risers. Like, <gasps> oh, no. Year. Didn't. Didn't come out for about three or four hours. Let so. me know. I'm a oh. cat whisperer. I can help you out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when those back claws come out because they don't like TV cameras. Anyway, pretty uh, sunrise. That was from yesterday out there in Castroville. Beautiful. And we should have a pretty good looking one this morning. Well, already starting to see the glow out there of the uh, morning sunrise. Grab your glasses. Uh, 74 degrees right now. Same thing, Port SA, 79 at Stinson. And the humidity, dew point temperatures, maybe up a degree or so compared to yesterday morning at this time, but still. That's not too bad for this time of year. We don't really have that much of a heat index to deal with out there as of right now. And heat index readings later on this afternoon won't be that much above what the uh, air temperature is, but that's going to be changing by next week. So here's the satellite radar picture going back 12 hours. And yeah, there were couple of uh, stray showers here and there. Again, you can count them on one hand and that'll be the situation again today. We still are keeping an eye down here on, well, it, it's starting to see more of a counterclockwise rotation there. And that is what the Hurricane Center says, about a 80-90% chance now that it will form into a tropical depression within the next uh, 48 to 72 hours. Now, as far as any um, rain from that, there may be a couple of wraparound showers well off to the east, but this thing primarily and this model is taking it and pushing it off and until there's really a good center of circulation um, it, for something that all the models to kind of grasp onto but uh, this is still a pretty good depiction of 
what a lot of agreement is, is, is that this thing is going to be working its way off to the east of us, and it's going to be a huge rain producer, obviously, well off there to the east of us. So the indirect effect from it is sinking air and heating up this weekend. 90 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. High temperature today gets up to 95. A shower thunderstorm out there really wouldn't count on one. And then as we go into the weekend, like I said, things are definitely going to be heating up. Humidity is going to be OK this weekend, but it's going to be very hot, very humid to start off next week. Hold on more coming up after the break. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA in the wake of President Biden and President Putin's high stakes face to face summit. There are new details this morning about what went down and what's next for the world leaders. Also, our relations with Russia going forward. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. We are approaching the top of the hour ahead in our next hour of GMSA. We've got details on an overnight shooting on San Antonio's northeast side. Have you decided to start looking for work? We'll tell you about a big job fair coming up. And Stephen Cavazos is watching the roads for all of us this morning. Right now we're seeing some uh, flashing lights out there. Looks like uh, we've got a few vehicles on the side of the road at 35 AT&T Parkway down on the frontage road. We'll find out what's going on there coming up right here on GMSA. We'll be back. A fire in this abandoned building wasn't the only danger firefighters faced. They say it is full of hazards. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. The summit between President Biden and Vladimir Putin. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Washington. Coming up, the stern warning Biden delivered to the Russian leader. New details on the stabbing at a northwest side of movie theater. A closer look at that suspect. And a closer look at the roads with Transguide. Roads are wide open right there in that shot. We saw some hazard lights on uh, other shots, so we'll check in with Stephen. And also a look out with live cam. Beautiful shot there. Good morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Ooh, hi, it's uh, Thursday. It is June 17th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Wow, it looks really pretty out there. It's a beautiful sunrise. Mike is back with more on a forecast. It remains fairly pred predictable as of late. Yeah, I mean, we are now getting into more of a, a summertime weather pattern, but the nice thing also is the fact that we have really gotten a break in the past few days from all the humidity. You know, last week it was just ridiculous in yes. the afternoon, and that bodes well for the start of Fiesta later on this evening if you are going to be uh, heading out there. First of all, great start to the day, the early morning glow of the sunrise and temperature right now is at 74 degrees, 2.68. That is about normal average low temperature and a dew point of 68. That's tolerable. We'll take that any time during the summertime around here. Mold is moderate and uh, grass is on the low side. And temperatures, we may um, drop another degree or so. Going to have a beautiful sunrise and then plenty of sunshine, especially through the first portion of the day. And then later on this afternoon, we'll probably start to see a couple of those clouds trying to, to pop up here and there, sort of like what we had yesterday. And one or two showers are possible. I really wouldn't count on it that much. There were one or two out there yesterday, and it's going to be about the same situation today. 95 high temperature. Um, that then is going to feel like about 97, 98. So heat index readings aren't going to be that much above what the actual air temperature is, thanks to some tolerable humidity. We will start to heat up going into the weekend. Then humidity is going to make a big return. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, like Mark and Steph said, we did have this issue here. at 35 at AT&T Parkway. Looks like we have an 18-wheeler and what appears to be a truck here from the view at Transguide. Uh, it looks like this is off on the frontage road there, so it's not causing any issues right now for our drivers there along 35. Uh, but something to be keeping an eye out for and showing here on the map, we can tell you that that's right around the AT&T Parkway area along 35. 35 on the frontage road, possibly going into uh, the southbound lane. So just be cautious. We'll be watching that one pretty closely, but it looks like it could possibly clear up here in the next few minutes. And if you're going to be traveling into the downtown San Antonio area here in the next few minutes, let's take a look at these inbound times. We got here uh, 24 minutes if you're coming in from Bernie at I-10. And if you're coming in 
from Bolverde, we got 26 minutes on 281. And if you're coming in from New Braunfels on 35, we got 25 minutes. So things are looking pretty good right now. We had a busy start to the morning, but thankfully things look like they're resolving pretty quickly. We do want to bring your attention to another stall that we have happening here off Ralph Fair. This looks like this one just popped up in our trans guide view. So we'll be watching that one closely. Looks like it's an 18 wheeler that's pulled off to the side, not causing any issues right now, Mark and Seth, but another thing that we'll be keeping a close eye on. Thank you, Stephen. Flames and smoke were only part of the problem facing firefighters early this morning near the medical center. They say the building that burned near I-10 and Loop 410 was a hazard in itself. Katrina Reuber is live there with a report. Now, you mentioned earlier that it is a place which firefighters avoid, but dozens of people live in it. Yeah, they say dozens of homeless people, 20 to 30 on any given day, living inside this building. And because of that, there's a lot of debris here. Clothes, according to firefighters, and other items piled up knee high. They say there are also some uh, problems with the structure that make it dangerous for them to go in. And that's why they have to approach this from the outside whenever there is a fire. There are numerous fires, according to firefighters. The one this morning, let me give you a look at the video. This happened a little bit before 4 o'clock this morning. They tell us that a passerby is the first one who noticed the flames and smoke and called it in. Firefighters got here. They found flames coming out of the front side of this building. Now, this is the old World Car building, according to the sign here, the World Car Center. Uh, but it's been abandoned for some time, and firefighters say that it has been a problem. They have had numerous fires here, and they say they have found people actually running out of this building in the past. When they got here this morning, there was no one here, just the fire. But again, they had to approach this more from the outside for their own safety. We had arson investigators and fire investigators who went in, took a look around, but again, they are believing that this possibly is related to homeless people staying inside this building. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, we're getting a closer look at that lone suspect and a brutal stabbing in a popular northwest side movie theater. 24 Andrew Alexander Pantaleon is now in police custody. Yesterday, he turned himself into SAPD's central substation yesterday afternoon. Police had been looking for a suspect since Ju the June 5th incident at the Palladium that left a woman with multiple stab wounds. SAPD reports she has since been released from the hospital will recover. Police said it appears the incident was a random act of violence and there was no known motive. Patty Leon will now be charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A year after a man was shot and killed in his car, a new arrest has been made. 25-year-old Christopher Alderete was shot in the 1100 block of West Ridgewood Court. That was back on June 15th, 2020. San Antonio police say initially this man, Fabian Hernandez, was arrested for murder last year. Now this woman, Venus Flores, is also in the Bear County Jail. An indictment states she shot and killed Alderete. So we were full of mixed emotions, honestly. It was a sad day for us, of course. It's been one year since he was killed. And when we found out the news, we were excited, you know, happy. Andrew says she will wear the color orange for the entire month of June in honor of her son and as awareness against gun violence. Flores is in the Bear County Jail for murder. Her bond was set at $150,000. In your morning headlines, lawmakers in Washington working on legislation that calls for various public and private entities to notify the U.S. government within a day of a cyber attack. The bipartisan bill being led by Senators Mark Warner, Marco Rubio and Susan Collins. Right now, there's no federal standard for breach notifications, which critics say is leaving the U.S. vulnerable to hackers. Legislation is expected to apply to U.S. government agencies and federal contractors. Also includes liability protections for those who submit reports. This morning, President Biden is back at the White House after wrapping up that eight day overseas trip with a historic sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. President Biden says there were some disagreements, but that the tone of the summit was positive. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the historic handshake. President Biden and Vladimir Putin sitting down for two hours and 38 minutes inside this 18th century villa in Geneva. Their meeting caps an eight-day international trip, a trip Biden says lets the world know America is back. After their sit-down, both leaders calling the meeting productive. He's very constructive. He's very balanced, just the way that I expected. I did what I came to do, and I must tell you, 
the tone of the entire meetings, I guess it was a total of four hours, was, 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 was good, positive. After their meeting, ABC's Rachel Scott questioning Putin about political opponents. You didn't answer my question, sir. If all of your political opponents are dead, in prison, poison, doesn't that send a message that you do not want a fair political fight? The Russian leader deflecting, instead bringing up the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Over 400 people had criminal charges uh, placed on them. We have no desire to allow the same thing to happen in our country. Cybersecurity was a big topic. Putin taking no responsibility, but Biden saying he let him know what won't be accepted. Biden gave Putin a list of 16 areas of infrastructure that were off limits to attack. If it Ignored, the president issuing a stern warning. I pointed out to him we have significant cyber capability. And he knows it. He doesn't know exactly what it is, but it's significant. And if in fact they violate these basic norms, we will respond. Biden and Putin also agreed to return their respective ambassadors back to Washington and Moscow, a move being described as a positive sign. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Right now, 609, about 74 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, it's summertime, and the San Antonio Public Library has some fun activities for teenagers. Outside with live cam, let's check on that sunrise. I can't see it in this camera shot, but it's a beautiful view of the downtown skyline. Much more with Stephen and Mike Ostridge coming up. We'll uh, see how things are looking weather-wise for the first day of Fiesta 2021. Be right back. 613, if you're looking for something fun to do this summer, you're in luck. The San Antonio Public Library, or SAPL, has got you covered. Summer with SAPL is underway, and there's tons of activities for kids, teens, and adults. And here's how it works for teens. First, head to any library branch to pick up a free t-shirt and two different summer kits while supplies last. The first is an herb planting kit. The second is a journaling kit. The library is also offering a ton of fun virtual activities for teens. Members with the library say it's a great way to get involved and connect with others. We also have a bunch of virtual offerings as well. We have things going on in Discord. We have things happening on Instagram. All of that is under our handle 210 Teen Library. So you can find us on Instagram or you can uh, find us on Discord and interact with us with different clubs throughout the week. Monday through Saturday, we have things going on happening online virtually for teens in San Antonio. So we encourage any teens who, who might think that maybe they don't have a, a space here in San Antonio or maybe they, they haven't had success making friends at school or things like that. You know, the library, we really get to make those connections throughout the community. You can also check out Sapple's Spotify profile. Just search for 210 Teen Library. And tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to tell you all about what the library is offering the younger kids. Well, let's talk Fiesta. I can't believe we've been talking about it for a couple, you know, weeks now. The build up to it. Now it's finally here, Mike Ostrich. Yeah, today's the first day of Fiesta in 2021. It's been more than two years since we've wow. had Fiesta. Details about Fiesta Fiesta, live music, barter for Fiesta medals, shop locally made arts and crafts, taste food, oh yes, from uh, San Antonio's culinary talents, all under the shade of the San Antonio skyline. The event takes place, starts at 4 this afternoon till 10 o'clock tonight at Hemisphere. You can watch the official kickoff party on KSAT 12 and KSAT.com starting at 8 o'clock. And for more information, KSAT.com. And Fiona and I are going to be uh, taking the stage about 5.30 or so to MC all the events, which is so wonderful. And there's bands and people and all the parade of everybody there. So so How exciting. Fun. The party begins. Yes, indeed. Hopefully there's not much traffic going down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 First day of Fiesta, and it's also my first Fiesta. I've never experienced it, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, but, you know, we do have some traffic that we want to keep you updated on. This one here at 35 at AT&T Parkway. We've been talking about it for a little while now. It uh, looks like we have a stalled 18-wheeler here with a truck. Now we're receiving some assistance there. We have some lights uh, flashing now, so that's a good sign that uh, they, this could be clearing up here in the next few moments. And it appears that this is on the frontage road of 35 at AT&T Parkway. 
Saturday, so not causing any issues right now. But of course, we're going to be watching that one pretty closely like we have been. And now we did have a crash that was reported here. It looks like it just cleared here at I-10 westbound at UTSA Boulevard. That crash popped up in our system, so we were watching that. Wasn't causing it causing any issues, so thankfully that looks like it has also resolved. Now we do want to bring you to your attention to another stall that's actually happening here around I-10 at Ralph Fair. We do have an 18 wheeler that's off to the side there. Uh, it's not clear exactly the location of where that 18 wheeler is uh, pulled off to at the side, but just be cautious if you're going to be heading out in that direction in the next few moments. We want to bring it back here to Trans Guide to show you a little bit of progress there, but what we also want to show you is uh, the dry, the beautiful view we have here at Trans Guide at 35 at Martin. People getting out the door, and it looks like here comes the sun. The afternoons and evenings are quite warm, but I guess it could be hotter for Fiesta, right, Mike? That's well, true. Yeah, even in, in April. April uh, yes. Yeah, we've had, uh, I remember one year, I think it was my first uh, <laughs> oyster bake doing a live shot there on that Friday. It got up to 100 that day, and that was back in April. So, yeah, this is really not bad at all, and humidity is going to be okay. We're going to have lots of sunshine today. Right now, temperatures are pretty close to what you would expect for the, the start this time of year in the upper 60s and uh, some low 70s out there and throughout the next uh, couple of days today we're going to have uh, partly cloudy skies or mostly sunny skies I should say a couple of those clouds will be building up maybe a shower or two here or there you know there were still one or two of them out there yesterday the odds of rain though are almost nil and the weekend yeah it is going to be heating up humidity is still going to be okay through most of the weekend Charlene up in Balverde just sent me this picture and wanted to show it to you that was the sunrise yesterday there and I th let's compare it to today's sunrise just almost identical thank you very much for the case connect picture by the way uh yeah grab your sunglasses and don't forget lots and lots of water as the experts are always talking about don't wait till you're out in the heat and getting thirsty just hydrate all the time and of course lots and lots of sunscreen all right uh dew point temperatures and therefore humidity they will be dropping down later on this afternoon and uh, even forecast down in the 50s. So pleasant air out there in portions of the hill country. And this is not bad. So heat index readings later on today aren't going to be off the charts. Uh, more humidity tomorrow morning. We go through that cycle again. That'll be the case going on into the weekend. Like I said, heat index readings won't be too awfully much above what the actual air temperature is. Even just a, a few triple digit readings down there to the south. So we have had hotter weather now as far as dew points, they stay tolerable through the next couple of days, but then look what happens going into next week. We're going to get a ton of humidity around here and with those dew points getting back up to where they were in a week ago when we started off of the first part of last week and it was just miserable in the afternoon. That uh, looks like it's going to be the situation starting off next week and the weather service has actually said that they're going to be looking at uh, heat advisories potentially to start off next week because the heat index reading is going to be that high. The system down there in the Bay of Campeche, which is still Hurricane Center, says a very good chance it's going to be developing in the next uh, couple of days. Um, computer models right now have that thing well to the east of us, a huge rainmaker well off to the east of us. There could be a wraparound shower maybe around Houston. That would be about the extent of it. But what it will do is have the indirect effect of helping to heat us up for the weekend. But like I said, still tolerable humidity, at least for the next couple of days. 90 at noon today, 95 for a high temperature. A, I don't even know if few is the right word to put in there. A, one or two storms out there, showers popping up later on this afternoon. Very few and far between. Uh, tomorrow, will be up in mid 90s again and then continue to heat up going into the weekend. Looks like it's going to be a pretty toasty Father's Day on Sunday. Summer officially begins Sunday night late, so the first full day of summer is definitely going to feel like it. 98, and like I said, we'll have to watch out for potential uh, heat advisories on Monday. Hopefully, fingers crossed, some rain by Tuesday. All that, fingers crossed. That would be a belated father's gift, you yes, guys. Yes, but and hopefully we see you downtown tonight. Yeah, hopefully. how exciting. Break a leg out there. Thank you. Yeah. 620, about 75 degrees. And get ready to raise a glass. The bright new bar and food truck park has a lot of people buzzing on social media. Still to come, what makes it so unique? 
essential mist transforms fragrance infused with natural essential oils into a mist to awaken your home with an experience you can see, smell, and feel. It's air care redefined. Airwick Essential Mist. Connect to nature. As a repairman, I hear a lot of folks say they feel like they have to rinse off dirty dishes like these before loading them into the dishwasher. But New Cascade Platinum changes all that. New Cascade Platinum with 50% more cleaning power. It dissolves fast to start cleaning sooner, releasing the soaking power of Dawn. Then, Cascade's food-seeking enzymes latch on and break down food into particles so small they can flow right down the drain. And it's powerful enough for the quick wash cycle. New Cascade Platinum with 50% more cleaning power. The number one brand just got better. Allergies don't have to be scary. Spraying Flonase daily stops your body from overreacting to allergens all season long. Psst, psst, all good. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. Do you think they will find who did this? I would certainly hope so. I hope so. It's the murder mystery gripping Colleton County, South Carolina. 10 days ago, 52-year-old Maggie Murdoch and her 22-year-old son Paul found dead outside their home, the victim of multiple gunshot wounds. This morning, the victim's family is speaking out to ABC News. Did they have any enemies? I really don't know of any enemies. You hear all this talk on the, you know, social media with regard to Paul, but I don't know of anybody no. that would truly that would truly be an enemy or truly want to harm them. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on our exclusive interview, plus the very latest on this urgent investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, Carlton County, South Carolina. 624. If you're new to San Antonio or new to KSAT 12, we have a popular segment called Be uh, Behind the Kitchen Door. Now, our Dylan Collier investigates poor or failing restaurant scores around San Antonio. And here on GMSA, I get to show you perfect scores from recent inspections. And this morning, we begin with the Taco Cabana at 1255 Northeast Loop 410. Congratulations on acing your inspections. Also, kudos to Wingstop at 8603 Highway 151. Moving along, we have Five Guys Burgers and Fries up in my neighborhood, Stone Oak area. This is at 20,811 Highway 281 at Stone Oak Parkway. We also have Jason's Deli on 25 Northeast Loop 410. And finally, we have JD's Chili Parlor, 503 Chestnut Street. Congratulations on your perfect health inspection score. If your place got a perfect score in the last 30 days, let me know about it. We'll share the good news right here on the morning show. Send me an email at bkd at ksat.com. Steph? Yeah, quite a few people with perfect scores. That's great. Yeah, we're, we're ramped back up now. Metro Health's doing inspections, and so we're going to keep the scores coming, hopefully on a weekly basis. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you. And check this out. A colorful new bar and food truck park is making waves along Museum Reach just in time for Fiesta. It's called El Camino and you can find it on Avenue B near East Jones Avenue today at 11 a.m. They're going to hold their grand opening so you're going to find specialty cocktails there and treats all in an Instagram worthy atmosphere. One that's sure to get you lots of likes. You can read more about it at KSAT. Dot com and actually that's just down the street from us. Oh, from us or yeah. you? No, here. Oh, here, here. Here at Kesa. Yeah, it's not too far. All right, we'll have to check it out. Yeah, time now is 626 and about 75 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA today, the latest on overnight shooting on the city's northeast side. And let's take a look outside with Transguide. Now something's going on there. Yeah, something going on at 281 and Loop 410. We will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos soon. Right now, one of our top local stories. An overnight shooting sends one man to the hospital. We'll have the latest. A quick look at the Rosa Trans Guide. There's 281 and Divine. We'll be checking in with Steve Cavazos soon. And outside with live cam, we had a really pretty sunrise earlier. Now it's kind of hazy looking out there with a thin veil of clouds. We'll talk to Mike in a moment for the first day of Fiesta 2021. It is Thursday, the 17th. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. And I'm so excited for Mike. You get to kick off Fiesta with Fiesta Fiesta. Yes, indeed. That's going to be starting uh, late this afternoon down there at uh, right outside the, the entrance to Hemisphere Plaza. And Fiona and I are going to be on stage emceeing again, which is just a blast and seeing all the folks down there. And, you know, there's medals and it's going to be broadcast from 8 to 10 tonight. Very 
and with Stephen Ursula, and yeah. we'll be in the background waving, you know, and <laughs> be in the bunny ears, bunny maybe. ears on them and everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be really, really nice. I mean, it's not going to be any different than we've had some fiestas even in April. Temperatures will be about mid 90s later on today, but uh, yeah, it's going to be a really and just nice. It's been two years, if you can believe, since we've had any sort of fiesta. So. Yes, everybody's just chomping at the bit for that. 74 right now, 68 is the dew point, which that's really okay as far as uh, the humidity is concerned. So we really don't have that much of any sort of a heat index to deal with right now. Upper 60s, low 70s, it feels like the actual air temperature. And the heat index won't be that much above the, uh, the high later on today. Now, mold is moderate, grass is low. We'll get the updated count coming out in uh, just about, uh, say, hour or so. Clear, mostly pleasant uh, this morning, and then later on this afternoon, mostly sunny skies. You know, one or two of those showers is still possible. There were still one or two of them yesterday. The odds, though, are not that great at all. And the weekend is going to be heating up. We'll still have decent humidity. That's going to be the indirect effect of that uh, tropical system that's trying to develop in the Gulf of Mexico. And then starting off next week, it's going to be a hot start and the humidity is going to be coming back in here. Monday is not going to be a fun day as far as the humidity is concerned. And a storm or two, hopefully, by the middle part of next week. Details, just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. So we had the big problem earlier. Things settled. Is there something big now? You know, not as big as what we saw a little bit earlier this morning with that major crash on 35, but we do have a new crash that's reported here at 281 South. Uh, this is a view from Trans Guide. You can take a look there behind that pillar. We're seeing what looks like a truck uh, almost behind there. Now, we did talk to our friends at Trans Guide. They did tell us that this was a crash that came in a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, give us a little bit of a, lo a specific location. That crash happening here off Loop 410 westbound right at Airport Boulevard. Uh, and as we know, as morning is starting to get going and people are getting out on the roads, this could impact your commute. So we're going to be watching that one pretty closely, but this is on the frontage road. So just just be cautious if you're heading out to the airport in the next few moments here. Now we've also spotted a stall here at Loop 410 westbound, not too far, right at Perrin Bottle Road. Uh, still early enough to where it's not causing any backup or issues or congestion on the roadways. But again, this is in the 410 westbound lanes right at Perrin Bottle there. So do watch that. Be careful if you're heading in that direction. Let's go ahead and take a look at our inbound times. If you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area here in the next few moments, if you're coming in from Seguin on I-10, we're looking at 29 minutes right now. And if you're coming in from from Lavernia on 87. We're looking at 23 minutes this morning, and if you're coming in from Floresville on 37, we got 28 minutes right now. So things are picking up, but right now, if you're coming into this area, nothing too major to report. So bringing it back here to 281, uh, the view from 281 at South. We'll be watching this guy pretty closely, Mark and Steph, but right now, not causing any real issues for the uh, drivers on the road. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, one man is in the hospital following an overnight shooting on the northeast side. It happened just before 2.30 this morning at the intersection of Corinne Drive and Ira Lee. It's not far from Austin Highway. Police say the man in his 30s was sitting in his car with a woman when another man tried to rob the two and shot him in the shoulder. He was taken to the hospital in serious condition. There's no word if the woman was hurt. The suspect right now is still on the loose. Also new this morning, the Frio County Sheriff's Office is releasing information about a deadly shooting that took place in downtown Pearsall yesterday. This happened just before 11 a.m. in the city's downtown area. Pearsall police say a suspect entered a business there with a gun and shot two women. Police say the suspect left the business and went to another business where he killed himself. The two women were taken to the hospital. No word on their condition. The incident caused nearby businesses to go into lockdown. No one else was hurt. In other local news, a man in jail this morning after authorities say he tried to set a home and two cars on fire. 44 year William Sheroy North was arrested yesterday. According to an arrest affidavit, he tried to set his home and his wife's car on fire in Converse early Saturday morning. The next day, investigators say he tried to set another car on fire, this time at an apartment complex on Parambital. Surveillance video from the complex helped officers track him down. He's now charged with arson. Texans will soon be able to carry handguns in public without having to obtain a license or training. Governor Abbott signed a permitless carry gun bill into law yesterday. It allows anyone 21 and older who can legally possess firearms in the state to carry handguns in public places without permits. The legislation is set to go into effect in September. Critics of the bill say it elim eliminates mandatory firearms training that helps protect the public and also makes it more difficult to determine who is unlawfully carrying a weapon. 
President Biden back at the White House this morning after he and Russian President Vladimir Putin spent more than three hours discussing issues yesterday at their summit in Geneva, Switzerland. In one area of agreement, Biden and Putin decided to return their respective ambassadors to Washington and Moscow in a bid to improve badly deteriorated diplomatic relations between their countries. Biden and Putin also agreed to start working on a plan to solidify their country's last remaining treaty limiting nuclear weapons. Today, the Democratic-led House, with the backing of President Joe Biden, is expected to approve legislation to repeal the 2002 authorization for use of military force in Iraq. The growing momentum behind the repeal measure follows years of debate over whether Congress has acceded too much of its war-making authority to the White House. The White House says no ongoing military activities are reliant upon the 2002 authorization. As flight schedules return to normal, the FAA mandating additional inspections of those Boeing 737 MAX jets. The public order is actually designed to follow the aircraft manufacturer's own recommendations. The inspections to make sure the automated flight control systems are operating correctly after that major fix. It's a system Boeing completely overhauled after two crashes killed 346 people. The incident has forced the 736, 737 MAX fleet rather to be grounded for 20 months. Most U.S. airlines are already doing the inspections as part of their regular maintenance now. The FAA is hoping airlines in other countries will follow suit. Right now it's 636, about 75 degrees. On GMSA, a San Antonio man carrying on the legacy of his great-grandfather who survived the Tulsa race massacre 100 years ago will share their family's story of survival. 640, get your resume ready. Visit San Antonio hosting a job fair next week to help hotels and restaurants and venues fill job openings. There will be more than 25 businesses looking to hire. It's happening at the Alamo Dome next Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information, visit ksat.com. This month marked 100 years since the events of the Tulsa Race Massacre, which is widely considered to be one of the worst racial incidents in American history. Our R.J. Marquez talked with a San Antonio man whose great-grandfather survived the massacre. He tells us how his grandfather's story inspired him to use his voice to speak out against social injustice. Everybody loved him for, for how straightforward he was, and that's the best way I could describe my granddaddy. San Antonio resident Tristan Patton said his great-grandfather Joe Robert Burns was not a man of many words, but his story is one that speaks volumes. Burns was four years old when his neighborhood in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Greenwood District, was destroyed in 1921 because of race riots and violence against the black community. He never really talked about it to us. That wasn't something that he did. None of the survivors really talked about that, that event just because of the fear that um, the fear that was instilled in them. At the time, the Greenwood District was the wealthiest black community in the U.S. It was called Black Wall Street because of the black-owned stores and businesses that thrived in the city. You build infrastructure for, um, to, to create success in a community. That's what Black Wall Street was. It was a conglomerate of businesses, um, a collective of, of uh, money that a, a bunch of people put their money together and built something. But that was all wiped away in the span of just 18 hours. Historians say an estimated 75 to 300 people were killed by white mobs that stormed Greenwood. Thousands were left homeless or in evacuation centers. Patton's great-grandfather made it out, later enlisting in the U.S. Army and returning with two bronze stars and a presidential award. Went to college, got his degree, was a pharmacist, came back to Tulsa, the city that burned down, the city that tore itself apart, and served the community there. Patton took part in last summer's George Floyd protest in San Antonio. He felt compelled to help his community speak out on systemic racism and police brutality. I have to be out there and make sure that someone's voice is heard. There's a lot of things that I owe to my grandfather. Patton recently visited Tulsa to honor the victims and his great-grandfather, who died last year at the age of 92. He's carrying on his great-grandfather's legacy as the story of Tulsa is now being told more in the open. We're having this interview about the Tulsa Race Massacre, um, but that wasn't who my granddaddy was. That wasn't who he was as a, as a person. He didn't wear that on his, on his shoulder. My granddaddy wasn't just a survivor, he lived. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News.
643, Mike has a traffic jam to show you coming up. Yes, but first let's check in with the traffic with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I, I thought traffic was my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically. Yes, you know what, and I share it with Samuel King. But uh, we're taking a look here at Transguide at 281 South. This is a view from Transguide. We do have an issue happening out there. Uh, now, we know that this is a crash that occurred. You can't really see it because we have a pillar that's blocking that view there, uh, but it's not causing any real issues right now. This is on the frontage road right at Airport Boulevard. Boulevard. Taking a look here at the map. This is at loop 410 westbound again right at Airport Boulevard, not causing any real issues as the morning's picking up, but something that we will continue to keep watching here uh, throughout the morning. We do have a stall also happening here off loop 410 westbound at Perrin Vital still out there right now. And of course, we know it's still early enough to where it's not causing any big issues, but we are watching that one pretty closely as well, guys. And we want to bring your attention over here to I 35 northbound at AT&T Parkway. Earlier, we talked about a stalled vehicle that was out there, but now TechSot is reporting that this is actually a crash that occurred a little bit earlier, but we're seeing a little bit of resolution here. We're bringing you this view where that stalled vehicle was. Looks like it just cleared out. It was an 18 wheeler and a truck, but that's some pretty good news if you're going to be heading out in the next few moments. Actually, still right there, but clearing out pretty nicely. All right, Mike's traffic jam coming up in a moment for KSAT's first ever Fiesta Ports Parade airs tomorrow night from 8 to 10 right here on KSAT. First hour features tons of info about Fiesta's history, including traditions that date back hundreds of years. Ava Max will perform her hit song, Kings and Queens, as KSAT spotlights all the Kings and Queens for Fiesta 2021. And during the second hour, Black Eyed Peas will perform Mamacita and AJR will perform their hit, Bang. And we're going to meet the Porch Parade winners. I mean, look at all of those uh, that entered that. This is going to air from 8 to 10 on tomorrow night. The Juneteenth special from ABC, which was set to air at that time, is going to air Saturday at uh, 2 a.m. Wow, those are beautiful porches out there. We yes. can't wait to see the finished product of the special again tomorrow night, yes. 8 to 10. Those are fantastic. Hey, very quickly, uh, Steph was trying to signal me uh, while Stephen was doing <laughs> traffic. Could you do the signaling that we had this coming uh, up let's here? Let's see. Should I think I went. What did I do? I, I said. This, this, this. Do the whole dance move. That's like a oh, dance move. I don't, yeah. remember. I don't remember. I <laughs> thought she was doing the mocking. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, this is not a traffic jam or a parking lot, I think, something like that. But <laughs> yes. Uh, it's no matter how you slice it, that's considered a moving violation. But um, bunch. <laughs> yes. I don't know if the cows came home, but they sure did find shade. And that's a really good idea. Find lots of shade uh, throughout, obviously, the rest of the, the summer. And uh, today, there's not going to be much shade downtown, unfortunately, for the start of Fiesta Fiesta. And then going into this evening, it's going to be kind of warm out there. But humidity is going to be okay and there's the sun peeking over the horizon right now beautiful start this morning 95 for a high temperature today a lot of upper 90s obviously 103 del rio and um, again low to mid 90s just a couple of degrees above what the actual air temperature is but look at these forecast heat index readings not that much above the actual air temperatures, so it is going to be tolerable today. The humidity is going to be okay for the next couple of days. As a matter of fact, it may actually drop down a little bit over this weekend as the air really starts to sink, and that's going to be the indirect effect of this, which, well, you can see a broad area of circulation, but there's no real center to this yet. It looks like it's trying to form up right about there. Hurricane Center still says there's a very good chance this will form into a uh, tropical depression in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours. Long range computer models, though, as far as any rain, first of all, there may be I mean, one or two little showers out there. Not very likely, though, but this model has all of that. That system in the Gulf of Mexico staying well to the east of us is going to be a huge rain producer here along the Gulf Coast off to the east and then going up in toward the mid south. But for us, nothing from it except sinking air. And that's going to, like I said, help to uh, heat things up and temperatures will go up into the upper 90s over the weekend. Still decent humidity then that's going to change by the first of next week. 90 at noon today, mostly sunny skies. Top off at 95, a shower or two later on this afternoon. Right around, uh, say, 7 o'clock-ish, if you're heading downtown, we're going to, Fiona and I are going to take the stage about uh, 5.30 for Fiesta Fiesta, but uh, temperatures are going to be low 90s, uh, upper 80s, and then going into the evening hours. It's going to be warm, but nice evening. And then uh, over the weekend, 
we will be at uh, 96 Saturday, 97 hot Father's Day. Humidity comes back then first of next week. Uh, Weather Services said it may actually uh, look at issuing heat advisories for the first part of next week because those heat index readings are really going to shoot up there and then hopefully some rain by Tuesday and Wednesday. Well, again, break a leg from your morning yes. family on the Fiesta kickoff stuff later today. It's going to be so much fun. They always have the parade of a lot of the, uh, the folks out there from some of the sponsors and everything. They go by. There's bands, uh, Air Force Band, Army Band is going to be taking the stage. I mean, just everything. Awesome. Tune in or get down there. So. Are you pinching yourself? This is uh, really happening? It's fun. I mean, so many people are so excited, yeah. you know, that it's not fair because it's been two years since mm -hmm. yeah. we've had we've had a long, patient wait. Have they, fun. Yep. And have, stay cool. The party for without a purpose. Hey, what the heck, right? <laughs> Six forty eight, about seventy five degrees. Speaking of Fiesta, you can't have Fiesta without Fiesta medals tomorrow on GMSA. We're going to show you some fun metal designs and tell you about why these shiny trinkets have a big impact on the community and our Fiesta party with a purpose. Let's go outside with live cam. This is a view from down on the south side, looking back towards the downtown area. Thanks so much for starting your day every day with us right here on GMSA. Introducing your 2021 Fiesta Royalty, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, I'm Thomas Aguillon, Rafeo 72. Viva Fiesta! And meet this year's El Rey Feo 72. I was born and raised right here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, went to uh, Hawthorne Elementary for the first couple years. Uh, ended up at St. Uh, Saint, Saint Anthony's Catholic School in then Monte Vista. Uh, ended up at Central Catholic and actually stayed locally to get my college degree at UIW. Being raised by a single parent instilled valuable life lessons in him. You know, hard work um, and, and just making it happen. Uh, no one was going to hand you anything, and I think that's what I learned, uh, you know, when I was younger, is just, you know, you've got to go out, you got to put the work in, uh, and good things will come from it. His message to kids, believe in yourself. The believe to achieve is, you know, you believe in yourself. Your parents believe in you, your teachers believe in you, um, the community believes in you, Rafael believes in you. Believe in yourself, and if you can do that and get the work done, you'll achieve your goals and your achieve dreams. Not only is his message important to him, but also the importance of reigning as Ray Feo. Being part of the Ray Feo Education Foundation, you know, they help kids uh, uh, get scholarships to go to college. And so at some point in my mind, you know, it, it, we're helping someone achieve their dream. And Ray Feo's favorite fiesta events? Some of my good friends, uh, families really involved in Oyster Bay, so we would go and help out. And then in Nyosa, I just think it brings the, uh, the, the vibrant uh, part of San Antonio back to life. Away from his royal duties, one of Thomas's hobbies is a family tradition. We've got this pride as a family. We used to we we, we used to go out with my uncles, his brothers, my great uncles, I guess, uh, and just play at Brackenridge all for every Friday. And growing up as kids, and so that was you know those are my hobby. Uh, that, that's really my only hobby. Uh, I love reading. I love history. Uh, but but playing golf is kind of what uh, what uh, kind of soothes the nerves. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber, live at the scene of a shooting on the west side. This is the 2500 block of Castroville Road. The shooting happening right here a little bit after 5 o'clock this morning, this apartment complex. Police were called here. They say a 27-year-old woman who lives in an upstairs apartment uh, was shot this morning. Uh, she noticed a silver truck pull up, according to police. She came outside the apartment, and uh, according to police, two people in that truck began firing toward the apartment, hitting the woman in her belly. Uh, there were three people inside the home who were not hurt, including a toddler. A uh, police still uh, trying to put things together. You can see that they're still collecting evidence. Numerous shell casings throughout the parking lot as well as on the other side of the fence. And police are still trying to piece things together, talking to neighbors, trying to find out whatever clues they can about who fired those shots and why. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, everyone, we have some resolution here to a crash that occurred a little bit earlier this morning. Right here is a view from Transgod at 281 South at Loop 410 West. Taking a look here, you can see that we have a wrecker already out there. Earlier, we showed you that there was a vehicle behind this pillar there, but looks like we're seeing some resolution again. This was on the frontage road lanes here of uh, uh, Airport Boulevard right at Loop 410 going westbound. So again, some good resolution, good things here if you're going to be heading out the door in the next few moments. But a few stalls here and there, 281 McAllister Freeway southbound at Josephine Street. We're seeing a 
a stall there causing a little bit of delay and another stall that just resolved here at Loop 410 westbound at Perrin Bidal. Other than that, things are looking pretty good. A little bit of a slowdown on 281 coming in from Bulverde, Mike. Sunglasses this morning. Thank you, sir. And uh, the air conditioning is also going to help. 74 degrees right now, and we are going to see a high temperature up to 95, maybe one or two of those showers. I mean, it's hardly even worth mentioning. Heat index only about 97, 98, so uh, not oppressively humid and should be very nice weather for the start of Fiesta tonight downtown. Viva Fiesta, everybody. Please take care of yourselves and stay safe. Yes, and have a great time. We'll see you back here at 9.